Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and last time we examined the evidence for the Immaculate Conception. This time we'll look at the fourth Marian dogma, the assumption of Mary into heaven, body, and soul. First, let's look at some Bible passages that relate to the assumption. And he walked with God, and was seen no more because God took him. Genesis 5.24 This verse refers to Enoch in the days before the flood. What does it mean when we say that God took him? By faith, Enoch was translated, that he should not see death. And he was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation he had testimony, that he pleased God. Hebrews 11, 5 Henoch is Enoch, and the word translated here means something more like transported. Other translations use phrases like taken up to describe this action by God. In any case, the book of Hebrews says that Enoch didn't die, which seems to indicate that he was brought to heaven alive. And as they went on, walking and talking together, behold, a fiery chariot and fiery horses parted them both asunder, and Elias went up by a whirlwind into heaven. 2 Kings 2.11 Elias is Elijah, and once again we see that someone is raised into heaven, though it's not clear whether or not he dies on the way up. Now, both Elijah and Enoch are described by the Bible as holy people who pleased God, But there are some things that neither of them had. Neither one was the mother of God, and neither one was sinless from conception onward. If it makes sense for the two of them to receive this honor, then surely Mary would also receive it. As I see it, this is sufficient to show on biblical grounds that the dogma of the assumption of Mary is more likely to be true than false, but there is an important thing to remember. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. 1 Timothy 3.15 Though the Bible is excellent for showing that certain things are true about God, in the end the real reason to believe what it contains is because of the church. So what does the church say about the assumption of Mary? Finally, the Immaculate Virgin, preserved free from all stain of original sin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory, and exalted by the Lord as queen over all things, so that she might be the more fully conformed by her Son, the Lord of lords and conqueror of sin and death. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 966, first sentence. So there are good reasons to believe in the assumption of Mary, both on the basis of the Bible and the teachings of the Church. Next time, We'll critique an argument against this teaching. Is the assumption of Mary an ambiguous dogma? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.